Now the Fire King structure decks have taken the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG by storm because with this structure deck in addition to one or two other engines, all the different builds of the deck can be very competitive in today's metagame. You have the Tri-Brigade build, which I showed off on the channel, plus some combos. So if you guys want to check it out, it's already on the channel. You have the Diabella Star build, but then do you really want to spend $350, $400? Probably not. That's probably why you guys are watching this video. So the last build that you guys can play and one of the most powerful builds as well is the Dogmatica build. Now the Dogmatica build, of course, is a lot more budget than the Diabella Star, even more than the Tri-Brigade, I think I would say as well. And on top of that, it plays a little bit differently. While the Tri-Brigade and the Diabella Star engine may be a little bit more aggressive, the Dogmatica engine is a lot more control-based, using Maximus to get rid of your opponent's extra deck, using your monsters to keep destroying your opponent's monsters on their turn. A lot of the time, you're really just playing on your opponent's turn. And that's kind of how this deck functions. With that, that being said, I don't want to keep you guys waiting too long. Let's get right into the deck profile. So to get into the deck profile, of course, we are starting with three of the legendary Fire King Ponix. Ponix is one of the most important cards in your deck. This is going to get a lot of your combo started. You need to have this card typically paired with another card is absolutely insane. But this card on its own starts so much of your combos. And then you're playing two of the Sacred Fire King Garunix, as well as three of the Fire King High Avatar Kirin. Now, I really like these ratios. Three and two, I think, are perfect. And the reason for that is Garunix does recur itself from the graveyard. So once you get one in rotation, it's always going to be recurring itself, which is really nice. And then Kirin, think is really powerful because it does a few things for you one you need to be able to get this to your hand so that you can summon it to your side of the field because with sanctuary you're going to be able to make your rank 8 garunix eternity which is really important and the other reason why this is really powerful is because when it's destroyed you can special summon another fire king either from your hand or your graveyard and then it destroys a card on the field so that's really powerful because not only can you destroy your own cards to get your own effects off but it can also destroy your opponent's cards which means going second you're able to sort of break their board so three kirin two of the garunix i think is the perfect numbers then we're playing only just the one rank bali now while Rang Bali is really powerful, it's one of those cards that it's really good when it comes up, but you're going to be wanting to go into this later on in the game. It's not one of those things that actually advances your combos. These cards here over here are going to advance a lot of your combos. This card is something that you can end on if you go through some of the other cards in your deck, right? So Rang Bali is really powerful. It is a negate for you for spell and trap cards, which is really nice. And then we are playing three of the Arvada. Arvada is kind of the same thing as Rang Bali, but Arvada is actually just a little bit better. So when it's destroyed, it can actually special summon a Fire King from your graveyard. And that's really important because a lot of the time when you're setting up a lot of your combos you're going to be having a lot of graveyard presence anyways right so arvada being in your graveyard or getting destroyed i should say is really important to extend a lot of your combos and that's why we're maxing out on the arvada plus it's a beast warrior which is really important because you can actually search it with another card that i'll show you guys in a little bit but then we're also playing the one bearong now bearong searches on the standby phase after it's destroyed and that's really powerful as well because that's going to be able to get you to the cards that you're missing so if you don't have a kirin already in hand bearong is going to be able to get you to the kirin which is really nice and the reason we're only playing one bearong is because this is a card that you're going to kind of want to recur so once you destroy this card you know on the standby phase you're gonna be able to search but then arvada a lot of the time is going to be reborning your bearong and then once you reborn the bearong then essentially you can destroy it again to get the effect again right so the one bearong is really powerful because you're just going to keep looping it but you don't actually want to play multiple of this because it doesn't really do anything on its own so you guys can see with bring bali and bearong because they don't really do anything on their own you just want to be playing the one and the one but the ones that are actually going to be able to supplement a lot of your combos and push a lot of your plays you're going to be maxing out on or play multiples of lastly i do want to say with arvada that this is also a monster negate for you so it's really powerful in that sense as well i don't think i mentioned that earlier but to continue on with the fire king package we are playing three of the fire king sanctuary in this deck i actually think you should be playing three sanctuary sanctuary you're always going to be able to get with ponix but the nice thing about playing three sanctuary is that if you already see the sanctuary in hand because you're maxing out on it you can actually use the ponix to search something else and then it's going to be able to add multiple layers of disruption for you so that's why we're playing the three sanctuary we're also playing two fire king island to supplement with the sanctuaries two island i think is all you need i don't think there's a reason to play more than two so i like two island and then we're playing one of the fire king skyburn now this is a card that you're always going to be searching with ponix if you already have access to your sanctuary this card is another form of disruption for you it also sets up a lot of your plays because if you're using this card let's say as a one for one you pop your ponix you pop a card your opponent controls your ponix is going to be able to add itself back to the hand later on right same thing you pop your bear on pop a card your opponent controls etc etc so that's why we're just playing the one we're not playing circle in this build i don't think you need to be playing circle in this build because in the dogmatica build it's just much more of a control build right so that's why we're playing the one skyburn we're also playing one one for one one for one of course being able to get you to ponix is really important because you need to get the ponix to get a lot of your plays going so one for one is going to help you do that also one for one can put garunix in the graveyard for you and setting something up like garunix in the graveyard or even bearong it becomes really powerful because then if you're able to destroy your arvada or you're destroying another card you can activate the garunix activate the bearong or i should say summon the bearong off of the arvada for example and so that's why i actually really like playing the one for one because you do need some sort of graveyard setup in this deck and one for one does that for you right so i'm playing the one for one and then lastly i guess like these are technically not fire king cards but because it's part of the fire king engine we're playing two tanky tanky we're not maxing out on because the only real beast warrior you're going to want to search off 
often is the Arvada. So that's why we're playing two tanky. This deck is pretty consistent on its own. Being able to search the Arvada is really powerful. Of course, you can always search a Rangbali or a Barong if you need to, but searching the Arvada is, of course, really, really important, right? So two tanky. I don't think we should max out on it. I think the deck is consistent enough without maxing out on tanky. So moving on to the Dogmatica package over here, we're just playing the one Florida Lease, one Maximus, as well as three Nadir Servant. This is all you need to be playing. You're not playing Ecclesia. You're not playing Punishment. I don't think you need to be. This is the only things that you need to be playing. Of course, Florida Lease as a disruption. Maximus as well is really powerful because you're going to be able to send cards from your extra deck. That's actually going to get you some plays going, which is really nice. But on top of that, what Maximus lets you do is that it lets you get rid of cards from your opponent's extra deck. Now, while you're not actually choosing the cards that they get rid of, it does put them in a bad position or in a weird position, I have to say, because a lot of decks in today's format they're not using multiple of the same extra deck cards and on top of that a lot of combo decks especially will need multiple of their extra deck cards so once you start ripping cards out with your maximus and especially because nadir servant can bring back maximus from the graveyard so you can do it multiple times in a game it does put them in a really sticky situation so this is it for the nadir's package or the dogmatica package i think it's the perfect number moving on to the non-engine of the deck we are playing three ash three imperm three DD Crow, as well as three Talents, and one Call by the Grave. So it's 40 cards on the dot. This is it for our non-engine over here. And I kind of want to talk about my choices here. I know that these are pretty standard. I mean, Ash and Imperm, you don't really have to explain too much. But DD Crow, I actually really like in today's format. I saw a lot of people playing Droll and Lockbird in the main or Nibiru in the main. While those cards are pretty powerful, I actually think DD Crow is the best of them all, just because every deck right now in today's format is using some sort of graveyard effects. And so being able to DD Crow, or not just effects, but in general, they're using the graveyard. So being able to DD Crow is really, Really powerful right now and again because this is a control based deck having cards like these to kind of slow down your opponent is very very important you can also otk with this deck which is really nice because the fire king monsters on the in themselves kind of put up a lot of damage which is really nice the tactics also is really powerful for going second because of course like this deck wants to go first it wants to be able to set up the small boards like again the boards in this deck are not like five negate boards they're kind of like okay let me pop a card here let me you know send cards from your extra deck let me you know recur all my cards in your standby phase etc etc let me make the rank eight garunix like you know what i mean like there's so many different things so that's why i think you need to be playing these nine hand traps and then the tactics when you're forced to go second becomes really powerful and also the thing with tactics is if you are going first and your opponent hits you with like an ash or something like that this actually becomes even better because ripping a card out of your opponent's hand on top of all the things that you guys are going to be doing leaves them with very few cards to actually play with so that's why i actually like the three tactics this in theory could be another hand trap but i do like tactics in today's format and of course one call by the grave just generically good card so moving on to the extra deck over here we are playing two of the grunix eternity in this deck it's actually very easy to set this up especially because you're playing three sanctuary with the ponix it's really easy to get this setup going and this card is absolutely insane because once you're able to pop your opponent's board like multiple times or disrupt them from making a board and then you can set this up essentially on your following turn you're going to be able to otk a lot of the time so two of the grunix eternity very important to be playing two in my opinion we're playing one ip mascarena as well as one unicorn i will say that if you guys have sp little knight play sp little knight i'm only playing unicorn because i don't have an sp little knight but unicorn can be here as a budget option over sp SP, but again just play sp right sp is really powerful here if you do have it one sunlight wolf of course it's a fire recurs you cards really powerful in that sense one heat soul for when you do go into sunlight wolf you can go into heat soul and play a little bit of a heat soul control so that's really powerful one axis code as an otk button one hita of course mainly your deck is fire right so hita of course makes a lot of sense one link karibo and one all mirage these are really important because when you are setting up your dogmatica plays you need cards in your graveyard to actually make things happen and having these being able to set that up is really powerful also they're both cybers so using these cards in tandem with something like a sunlight wolf will be able to get you into heat soul right because heat soul doesn't use cybers monsters so having these is really powerful as well another option instead of all mirage though i will say is anima i'm not playing anima but technically you can play anima for going second because your ponix is a level one right so just wanted to give you guys that option i'm not playing it myself but we are playing the one fair jeet as well as the one shureg these cards you can send to the graveyard off of nadir servant and you can get their effects off as well fair jeet is really good kind of fixes your hands a little bit especially if you have like the names that you don't want to see you can send the fear g draw a card put back a name that you don't want to see becomes really powerful because you're playing the one-off bearong right so like if you want to destroy a bearong from your deck using your guru nix this kind of puts it back in for you right so that's probably powerful one shurig as well one garura one entis and one titanic clad the reason why we're playing these ones is because first of all guru is going to get you an extra draw very important in that sense entis of course is going to destroy cards your opponent controls again going second is really powerful and the titanic cloud is really good because this gets you to a dogmatica monster and most of the time it's ecclesia but in this deck you can summon a florida lease or a maximus which becomes really really powerful and that's it for the extra deck over here 15 cards in the extra deck like i said i actually do really like this extra deck but you guys can probably swap out the almirage if you wanted to for an anima anima is really powerful as well right just another option for you guys going second having that anima just makes the deck very consistent in that sense right so i really do like this extra deck Thank you.
lastly going into the side deck over here keep in mind side deck is always going to be up to personal preference but i like playing three drill and lockbird keep in mind like i said earlier this is a control build of the deck essentially with the dogmatica cards and being able to play drill and lockbird against a lot of decks that kind of fold to it becomes really powerful you guys could argue to main this but again i didn't want to main it because i wanted to play tactics instead give me something for going second that uh because you know keep in mind like tactics is good into pretty much everything whereas this card yes it's good into a lot of decks but it's also kind of dead against a lot of decks that's why i'm playing the tactics but again you guys can swap that out if you guys wanted to we're playing the one harpies as well as two lightning storm for back row decks we're also playing three evenly matched this is good for rescue ace and also in two back row decks as well so a lot of back row hate over here board breakers is very important then we're playing three d barrier and three solemn judgment for when we're going first i like just playing these cards i think solemn judgment is just makes the most sense if you're able to set up some sort of board and just have a judgment on top of it it becomes really powerful and then d barrier of course against centurion or against a lot of the synchro summon base decks xc summon base decks etc etc even fusion if you guys are playing against uh branded uh this just becomes really powerful right it's pretty much a turn skip against a lot of decks right so i like d barrier but again it's always going to be up to personal preference if your locals is a lot of combo players make sure to side hate for combo if your opponent is a lot of back row players make sure you side hate for that but essentially the side deck this is just a skeleton that you guys can use to build your own side deck so that is it for today's video. Thank you guys all for watching. That was my take on Dogmatica Fire King for today's format. Now, the really cool thing about this deck is the Fire King package gives you the ability to OTK and do a lot of damage. And the Dogmatica package gives you that control ability that this deck really thrives on. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, though, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We're uploading every single day in the month of December. So make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned into all of that. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you guys all for watching. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace. Peace.